ABC 4's Jason Wynn maintaining a safe distance there. Thank you, Jason. Next, we'd like to go to one of our Utah ethnic and minority lawmakers, Representative Sandra Hollins. I believe we have her on the phone. Sandra, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sandra. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us this morning. Um, you know, you, you've had a really tough job being one of six of our ethnic and minority leaders in the state. Can you talk about the frustration that's not just been going on through the country, but in our state as evident as we're seeing today? Yes, um, thank you for having me. As you said that I am Representative Sandra Hollins and I represent District 23. And currently I am the only um, black American um, in the Utah State Legislature, um, Legislation. So um, yeah, it, it, what you're seeing now is people who are venting their anger and their frustration and their, they're sad about what they have been witnessing not only in the last couple of weeks with the three individuals who were um, who were killed or murdered, um, but what has been going on for quite a while in America. Um, and as um, Dr. King said, protest is the uh, voice of the of the unheard. People are not feeling heard, and so this is how they are venting, and this is what they're doing to be to be heard. Uh, Representative Hollins, um, a lot of people, I mean, this is nothing new. We've seen this time and time again. Is there mm -hmm. anything being done at the legislative level that could maybe prevent this from becoming a cyclical thing? You know, I think one of the things we need to look at um, is, as a, as a state and as a nation, is, is systematic racism. A lot of people, um, when they are stuck in this cycle, of, of systematic racism and, and they feel that they're not moving forward, um, they, they vent and this is what they do. And I think as legislators, uh, we need to look at our policies and how is it affecting people of, of color and, and, and what can we do better as a state to make sure that those people's needs are met and, and that they are being heard. Now, as citizens of the United States, we have the right to peacefully assemble. Uh, today's demonstrations turned into something much bigger than that. We all mm -hmm. know that our citizens, they're frustrated, they're angry, they're emotional. Is there a better way for them to get something done than what we're seeing right now? You know, I, I, I um, always tell people that they have the right to protest. Um, and I encourage nonviolent protesting. But one of the things we have to start looking at is what do we do beyond the protest? How do we address policies? How do we make change? How do we break down those barriers of, of those systematic racism to start dealing with different issues beyond the protest? We have to vote. We have to get out and we have to vote and we have to elect those individuals into positions that's going to reflect our values and understand what is going on in these different communities. And so you are really urging people like, please keep that in mind this November, make sure you're registered to vote, make sure that you get your voice heard through your civic duty. Yes, absolutely. You need, people need to be in contact with their elected officials. You know, I am one person and I, I'm always getting those phone calls or those emails or those text messages from other people in the state um, about what's going on or what they've experienced um, in this state as people of color. And I can tell you some of my other colleagues um, up there um, who are people of color get those phone calls also. Um, but it needs to go beyond us. You, people need to call their elected officials and let them know what is happening and so they can understand that we have an issue in this state. We have a problem in this state, and I have been saying it for quite some time. And am I surprised that it has finally boiled over? To be honest, I'm not surprised um, by it, that it, it has finally boiled over. Am I happy that it has boiled over? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I wish that it had not come to this point. But I also recognize that there are people out there who, are, who went out there with the intention of protesting very peacefully. And I know that there are some people who went out there with their own agenda. 
with trying to create chaos um, out there. And so I just want to stand in support of those individuals who went out there to bring attention to what happened to Mr. Floyd and to say this cannot happen ever, ever again. We need to do something about this. Uh, we did know ahead of time that there were peaceful demonstrations being planned today. But when you woke up, maybe maybe you turned on your cell phone, maybe you turned on your TV and you saw that there was property being damaged. There were people being hurt. They were having objects thrown at them. There were flames. Somebody lit a Salt Lake City police squad car on fire. Uh, what was what was going on in your mind and heart? Tell me what was your thoughts and feelings? You know, I, I'm, I'm sad by it. I am absolutely saddened by it, and, and that is not acceptable because now the conversation has shifted from discussing what happened and what we witnessed on television in Minnesota and in other places with the, with the individuals who, were, who have been um, killed. Uh, it has shifted from them to now talking about what is happening on the streets and the um, violence that is now happening on the streets. So it, it saddened me, and I, and I was not happy to see it taken that direction. Representative Hollins, we appreciate your time so much. Anything else that you would like to tell our viewers, our community members, that maybe I didn't get the chance to ask you? Sure. You know, I would just like to say, um, again, call for nonviolent protest. Yes, you have the right to protest, and please do protest. But let's do it in a nonviolent way. And I just want to let everybody know that they do have elected officials who are up at the Capitol um, who are working on trying to address these issues. And we are meeting, and we're looking, up, we're looking at what are the next steps that we're going to need to take to start moving this conversation forward and to start making changes in, in our community. And so I just want everybody to know they do have elected officials. We hear you and we see you, and we're working to try to make, make this um, our community better. You do so much great work for our community. Thank you so much for your time, Representative Hollins. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, this is what you're seeing is a live look in downtown Salt Lake City right now. You can still see hundreds of demonstrators are down there. Uh, they are protesting just down the street from where the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building is, which is also where the police department is. Uh, I want to mention that um, yesterday we talked to the organizer of Black Lives Matter Utah, and she told us that they, along with CAG, which stands for the Community Activist Group, they've been working with the Salt Lake City Police Department for the last three years to help prevent any sort of incident like what we saw in Minneapolis with George Floyd. She said that in the past three years, they have discussed, they've met with Salt Lake City Police two to three times every single month to talk about de-escalating training and implicit bias training. And she feels like they've made a lot of progress. She said that Salt Lake City Police have been very responsive. Um, and that's the kind of progress that they want to see. All right, live look out there in downtown Salt Lake City. Let's head back out to abc 4 is Jason Witt. Jason. Rosie, we can report to you that the National Guard is now here. You can see the Black Hawk right there on your TV. They're flying about to 150 feet right above this crowd right now. They're taking a look at everything that is happening from the above. But that is the National Guard in a Black Hawk uh, right on top of us right now. Uh, as my photographer starts to pan down, you can see this group of people. Uh, some of this this group that's right in front of us, they've had their hands up the entire time, uh, but there's other people that are starting to show up with masks and whatnot, uh, and they are trying to uh, put stuff into that car to keep that thing smoldering uh, right behind all this big group of people. You, there, I believe there is a fire twirler uh, back there, uh, so that is another thing to pay attention to. And as my photographer starts to pan over to his right, you can see the anarchy flag uh, being displayed right there in the middle, uh, right in front of those West Valley City and Salt Lake City police officers. Another thing that I can tell you is that uh, Roy City Police have arrived here. Uh, we've seen Roy City, we've seen Ogden, we've seen Cottonwood Heights, West Valley City. Uh, most of the agitation is happening right in front of us here. This is where uh, police had to constantly uh, reinforce that uh, line right there uh, and as my photographer can you John can you just pan over here uh, you can see that there is still a large group of people right over there off of 200 east uh, just north of 400 south here uh, but it appears that 
Well, there goes something that just came over towards me. Uh, but it appears that there is a lot of uh, people that have been cleared out right over here off of 200 East and police have this entire intersection blocked off. So Rosie, we're going to continue to monitor things down here because we know that sunset happens at around 8 50 and that is the time where law enforcement would like to have this under control. We're going to send this right back to the studio. I'm Jason Wynn live downtown ABC 4 News. All right. Thank you, Jason. And we just want to reiterate the time now is 8 o'clock. The curfew that Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall issued for Salt Lake City starts now. All right. I'm told that we have Senator Luz Escamilla on the phone. She is one of our six ethnic and minority lawmakers. Senator Escamilla, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Senator Escamilla, thank you so much for joining us this evening. When you woke up this morning, um, you know, we had an idea that there were demonstrations happening this morning. But when you saw the destruction and the violence that began to ensue, what was going through your mind? Uh, you know, it's, it's sad to see that when there's a group of people are interested in, in putting their, you know, their emotions out and making sure that they're protesting, which is their constitutional right, that then there are the others that bring violence and destruction to that conversation and that process. So, you know, we want to make sure people know that it's important that the community speaks up and that especially we're, we're forgetting the reason why we're having this conversation, which is, you know, issues related to police brutality and, you know, George Floyd in this case, which obviously happened in, a, in, a, in another state. But these are things that are systemic and that we've been having conversations for years and we need to fix a lot of these issues, but when you move into destruction of property and violence, it really deters from the reason why we're doing this. And I think that's the sad component of all of this. But we need to make sure we remind people why we're having this conversation and why protesting is is, is critical and is uh, people is within people's rights to do as long as they're not, you know, getting to violence and destruction. Now, some people, when they've spoken to us, they feel like change is not happening or it's not happening fast enough. What would you say as one of our lawmakers um, to these people who feel like they're not seeing any progress being made? And, and you know what? I, I think it's important to acknowledge that many communities are tired of waiting for change and that we're still are seeing a disproportionate impact on especially African-American and brown men of getting, you know, shot or treated, mistreated by, um, in, in they're seeing injustices on in the way they interact with law enforcement. And I think that we need to acknowledge that. That is true. And my answer to the question of why is it not moving fast enough, and I have my own children that are asking those questions that are, you know, we have to have conversations to them about being safe when interacting with law enforcement, that it's a reality for many of us. And that's why it was important for us to acknowledge the, the fact that we wanted to come as legislators together. But there are things that we can do, and there, we're moving the needle. It's not fast enough. And I think this type of demonstrations, I think, shows that for some, many in this community, they're tired and they want to see change. And I hope, you know, we get to focus back on, on policy. There are different layers of policies and conversations that we need to have and actions that need to take place. Uh, related to transparency, a full uh, police reform or criminal justice reform. Those are things that we need to talk. And then you see them at the state level, and then you see them also at local level, right? I mean, <clears throat> as lawmakers at the state level, we should see a statewide legislation that affects this issue. But obviously, local um, law enforcement and the city council are having conversations that are on the front lines of those police departments interacting with those communities. Have you or any of your colleagues talked about possibly bringing up or addressing or proposing any sort of police reform legislation this year? You know, that's important. So our goal with the press conference and what we were trying to convey is that we were going to have this conversation starting next week. We are going to convene. There has been work done. Uh, you know, Representative Hollins has worked on the, you know, the school to uh, prison pipeline, for example. Those are issues related to interactions between law enforcement and our youth. Uh, we've done legislation also related to gang-related activity and how to d bring mitigation pieces to help communities. So we know that social determinants of health are changing and impacting communities. And again, it disproportionately impact low-income areas or areas where you have high in um, low-income and minority communities. So there's been legislation that we've done. We need to do more. Transparency is important. There's been more conversation about de-escalation training. Are we giving enough resources to our law enforcement agencies? So there, you know, our police officers, because 
police officers are there to help and defend, but we need to make sure they're trained adequately, correctly, and they have the tools to succeed. And de-escalation training is critical. We should put that as a top piece on all the training and post-training. So all of those things, I think, will be part of the conversations moving forward, and they will be happening because we are hearing uh, loud and clear that the communities are not happy with things and practices that continue to happen in our not only in our state, but across the country. Senator Escamilla, what would you say to your constituents who are tired, they're exhausted, and maybe feel a little hopeless right now? You know, I, I think we continue, we need to continue pressing for reforms in the different layers of our criminal justice system, de-escalation training, police reform, that we're here to listen. But we also need to make sure people are engaged in all levels. We need people to vote in November, to elect people and ask the tough questions. And I think when we get there, we will be able to make changes. But that as we continue to speak up, and we should continue to speak up and protest, do it peacefully without um, going to, to destroying property and, and creating violence, because that's not going to get us where we need to Senator, we uh, appreciate your time so much. Anything else you wanted to include that I didn't get a chance to ask you? Uh, just, I, we appreciate also the media and our journalists that are covering this and you guys are doing a great job. Please continue to let the public know, especially now that there's gonna be a curfew that we never, you know, we don't go into curfew that often, that we want our public to know what it means to go into curfew. So just to be safe and stay safe at home. I think even on this COVID-19 also, it's important to be a reminder of those, those guidelines as well. Very important reminders. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, some very good reminders from Senator Escamilla uh, today, um, as she mentioned, uh, a curfew has been issued. The time now is 8.06. That curfew was implemented beginning at 8 o'clock today by our Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall. And that curfew goes until 6 a.m. Monday morning. There's multiple reasons why this curfew has been implemented. Number one is for the safety of everyone involved. If you have any family members, friends that you know that are in this area right now, please leave the area. You will help the entire situation with law enforcement trying to contain the people who are there for your own safety. We know that some of the demonstrators, they are throwing objects, they have vandalized, they have caused graffiti um, on people's personal property, on the city's personal property. Um, this is for everyone's safety. Um, there you see the information on there. All of Salt Lake City, the mayor has says that please do not enter any public areas unless you are EMS, unless you are law enforcement, members of the media, you're bringing food or essential supplies to somebody or that you live in the area. We've heard many demonstrators chanting the phrase, I can't breathe. Now those from what we know is some of the final, final words that um, George Floyd said in Minneapolis uh, before he died when an officer was kneeling on his neck. Uh, we heard earlier press conferences from um, the governor, from our Salt Lake City uh, mayor. Uh, we heard from multiple of our ethnic and minority leaders. Uh, this is a live look downtown. This is near 400 South, 200 East in downtown Salt Lake City. It's uh, right in front of the Salt Lake City Public Library, which is down the street from the police department. These demonstrations started around two o'clock this afternoon. The organizers originally intended for it to be peaceful uh, protests. Uh, we have another reporter, I'm told now, on the scene. ABC4's Haley Hendricks is out there. Haley, can you hear me? Hi, yes, we are here at the Utah State Capitol right now. And as you can hear behind me, we have people up here chanting, yelling justice for George Floyd. And as you can see, we have Utah Highway Patrol. We are told that Utah Highway Patrol keep coming in as more and more keep coming. And as you can see, we've got a vandalized Capitol building here with lives, blue lives murder up there, black lives matter. We're seeing all sorts of different things and different graffiti. If uh, my photographer AJ can pan over here, we've got all of this graffiti just around the, the cops. All, around the Capitol right now and people are out here protesting. And that is what we can bring you right now. We are, t we are told that the protesters up here are more peaceful than they have been in downtown. Reporting live, bringing you live updates from the Utah State Capitol, Haley Hendricks, ABC4 News.
All right, thank you, Haley. We are seeing demonstrators just downtown Salt Lake City as well as the Utah State Capitol, which is why it's so important for the public to please stay away from those areas. If you don't need to go to downtown Salt Lake City, please don't. There is now a curfew that's been enacted. We're going to head back out to the Salt Lake City Public Library area with ABC4's Jason Wynn. Jason, what are you seeing here on the ground? John. Hey uh, guys, uh, sorry, my photographer is getting prepared right now. We just had a knife that was thrown at us. Uh, as uh, as we can see, it is still hot. It is uh, from this officer telling me it is still hot, but you can see that there was a, uh, a knife with a blade on the end of it that was thrown uh, directly at us at the media. Uh, and it, it skipped across the ground here a little bit. And the officer was able to pick up this knife that was just tossed towards us. Uh, so those are the things that are being thrown at us right now. We know that the sunset is going to happen here uh, and in about 40 minutes here. And this is, uh, things have started to get a little bit more intense right down here in front of the city library off of 400 south and 200 east as we start to walk over this oh my photographer he's showing you right now that is the national guard up there in that black hawk right there uh, and they are just hovering they've been hovering over this entire area for about 10 15 minutes now uh, and they're just taking a look as my photographer moves over here this was the second vehicle right over here that was caught on fire earlier today you can see that there are people uh, jumping on top of that uh, that vehicle here and taking photos uh, now as my photographer he needs the white balance right now so he's going to do that so you might see a change in your color on your screen but uh, right here is the police line this is uh, a number of different law enforcement agencies working together right now and for what we can tell you is that most of the people uh, who have been detained uh, have been released we do we did see one uh, fight earlier today uh, that where an officer was uh, punched uh, the person that punched him told me he punched him because he was hit by his shield. Uh, that person is back there. We don't know if he's been arrested or not, but several officers, several people have been injured. Uh, medics have treated those people, uh, and if they were not police officers, they went right back to the other side of the line there. Uh, and now as my photographer starts to pan over to his right, you can see that there is just a, a massive amount of people. Heads up. Uh, there goes a, a bottle that just flew over top of us there. Uh, but you can see that the crowd of people, uh, it starts from uh, just a little bit south of 400 south, uh, and it goes all the way past 500 south here. Uh, and it's all right in front of downtown Salt Lake City here, uh, where all these people have been gathered. Now, if my photographer, John, can pan down, you can see right here, this is a lot of the projectile that has been thrown uh, throughout the day here. Uh, just over there uh, as is um, sorry as I'm walking over this here uh, oh, just over here is a trash can uh, that was on fire that was thrown earlier too uh, so these are a lot of the things that uh, law enforcement has been moving back here uh, but as John <coughs> excuse me here uh, I'm breathing some things in here uh, that's probably not healthy but you can see over here uh, as John pans over to his left heads up uh, there, uh, somebody just threw us a sandwich, uh, but there is a group of uh, people over here uh, in the middle, and that's where law enforcement has basically been uh, re putting people, uh, law enforcement line, they've been just reinforcing that law enforcement line is what I should say here. Um, now, every time somebody tries, uh, gets out of hand a little bit, again, there's people on both sides of here of this that are trying to keep things simple, and they're trying to keep this ab about a protest for Gregory Floyd. So this is one of those things here uh, where people, uh, it seems like they are calming down, but we do know that sunset is right around the corner. And uh, that is one of the things that we're all paying attention to as we move further along into the evening hours. But as I have been, uh, I can tell you here is, is that there are, the National Guard is flying above us right now. Uh, there is uh, a second, Black Hawk helicopter coming in, it appears like. Uh, so there are a number of Black Hawks that are, uh, sorry, I had to duck there here. I had law enforcement tell me there was something coming towards my head. Uh, but uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, Black Hawks that are above us that are flying over us, trying to uh, get a gauge to this situation, see how many people are here. Uh, but as you can see right here, uh, mostly uh, this crowd is just watching 
uh, and, and these police officers are just ducking a lot of water bottles uh, and other types of things. But you can see uh, when the crowd gets agitated, they do move forward here. But we're right behind this police line here. Uh, there is law enforcement from all over the valley that are right here. You know, this is the same group of people. Um, this is the same group of people that uh, we're all taking uh, Officer Lyde back to Ogden yes, uh, just a couple days ago uh, on Friday. So one of the things that these officers are all now trying to do, uh, we're going to come this way. John, let's go this way. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to come this way here because there's more projectiles being thrown. Law enforcement's just asking us to back up here. But we're right here in the uh, the plaza for the city library. It seems to be the safest area uh, because uh, right now we're able to get that whole 180 degree look uh, of this entire line. And I can tell you that there are protesters uh, all around this intersection. There are law enforcement all around this intersection here. Uh, and this law enforcement, they have the choice to move the line forward. They have said multiple times that this is an unlawful protest. Please disperse. Uh, but the crowd just keeps growing downtown Salt Lake City right now. So I'm going to send things back as we continue to monitor things here downtown off of 400 uh, South and 200 East. Uh, we're going to send this back to the station for right now while we regroup and figure things out here on the ground. I'm Jason Wynn, live in downtown Salt Lake City, ABC4 News. All right, Jason, please stay safe out there. We know that things are being thrown at people no matter what they're there for. Uh, I'm told now we have Pastor Corey Hodges from the Point Church on the phone. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Pastor, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Uh, very emotional situation right now. Um, what are your initial thoughts when you heard about how the situation developed this afternoon and into this evening? Yes, you know, my heart is just bleeding for our city and for our country, and um, I'm praying and I'm uh, asking everyone who people of faith and people of goodwill to um, to to pray for peace. And uh, we, you know, I think protesting is fine, but it cannot be violent. Um, this is not the way forward. We have to we have to um, admonish the protesters to protest peacefully because I don't think uh, violence and destruction is the way forward. Um, I understand that you say violence is not the way forward. How do we explain though what is going on here? I mean a lot of us who are watching at home or um, away from a safe distance we're trying to make sense of what's going on here. Um, help us bring some perspective to that. I think you know uh, with the country's long history with uh, racial inequity um, I think there's just a lot of frustration uh, and pain and uh, people I uh, don't know how to express that, and um, and this is in the, and part of the population is expressing it uh, the way we're seeing tonight, and in, in, in our own city and across the country. Um, but I think we have to learn peaceful ways, that we have to exhibit peaceful ways to voice our frustrations. I do understand uh, it is a legitimate um, feeling of frustration and. Um, inequality and um, people want justice, but the way to get justice is through peace. I don't think you can you can extract uh, uh, you know peace through violence. Um, I think we have to uh, learn how to express our frustrations and our feelings and our anger, although legitimate, um, in better ways. We have to be uh, uh, you, you know productive citizens in a way that um, we can channel our emotions in a positive way. Now I know what's really difficult is when someone encounters another person who may have some very bigoted views. How, what, what kind of advice would you give to someone um, when they meet someone who has very uh, hateful values or beliefs? How do we kind of help get them to see where we're coming from? Yeah, I mean, I am privileged to pastor a multicultural church. Um, we have people from over 35 different nations, uh, whites, blacks, Hispanics, Polynesians, you name it. And, and one of the things I always try to tell our people uh, that we have to be very intentional. We have to, we have to be very intentional um, in developing authentic friendships with people who are different than us. We have to uh, go outside of our comfort zone, and we have to expand our friendship circle uh, in a way where we're able to learn from each other and 
be able to uh, create safe places where conversations, frank and honest conversations can can happen. Uh, I think a lot of times we are, uh, uh, some people, we, we limit ourselves to uh, developing friendships with people that are just like us, whether it's politically, economically, racially, culturally. And I don't think that uh, helps foster, uh, you know, education in terms of understanding how we're different, how we're the same, uh, what we can do together, uh, expressing our common humanity and our common concerns. And um, I, so I encourage our people and I encourage anyone who's listening, you know, make an, make an attempt, make an, a deliberate and intentional attempt. Hey, I'm going to, um, you know, develop and foster friendships with people who are not like myself. And I think that's one way we can do it um, to, to, to make things better. Now, I know the majority of our law enforcement, they work tirelessly and wholeheartedly to serve our community, right? But that doesn't s still alleviate the concerns that some members from communities of color have when they deal with law enforcement. I mean, when we've talked to some people of color, uh, they say when they get pulled over by a police officer because of speeding or running a stop sign, they, they get really scared even though nothing's happened yet. Um, right. what, what would you say to a member of your church if they confided in you and told them that they had this fear? Yeah, I mean, even as a pastor and someone who's been here for 22 years, uh, I, I, I do feel a little anxious when if I'm speeding or if I you know, do something that uh, requires law enforcement's attention. I do have that same anxiety. I understand that as an African-American male and the father of three African-American males, um, it's, it's just our reality, unfortunately, uh, the reality of being black in, uh, in America. Um, and I, 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 I would say to young people of color uh, to be obedient to law enforcement uh, officers, to obey their commands, to uh, try not to express frustration and anger, to create, you know, to make the situation worse. Um, but I think some of the challenges is, are well, you know, particularly, you know, when we look at the videotape, the dreadful videotape that America has watched, sometimes you can be doing all those things and it still doesn't end up well. Um, but, but I think, you know, we can only control our actions and, uh, and try to respond in a way that is respectful to law enforcement officers. I, I, I want to first, I want to say uh, I'm grateful and thankful for all of our first responders. Um, I don't think it's right to label one uh, bad person, uh, you know, as if it represents the entirety uh, of that community, whether it's black people or police officers or, or you name it. I think we have to judge people, like Dr. King said, by the content of their character, you know, and not by the color of their skin. And, um, you know, if we all do our parts individually, we can make a difference. And so if you're stopped by a police officer, I think respect their authority, obey the commands, um, and to me, as a person of faith, I pray, you know, that, 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 that the situation is, is de-escalated and not escalated. But it is a reality for, for people of color to, um, to experience a large, large amounts of anxiety when being um, approached, stopped, or encountering a law enforcement. It's a fact, and we, we, have, to, we have to do something to make sure that um, those anxieties subside in some way. Pastor Hodges, some very wise and encouraging words there. We appreciate your time so much tonight. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we're going to head back out live to the scene. ABC 4's Jason Wynn is down there by 400 South, 200 East. Jason. Yeah, Rosie, uh, things have calmed down a little bit since we had that knife thrown at us. Uh, law enforcement took that over away from us. Uh, but right over here to my right, uh, law enforcement just reinforced this entire area that is just right in front of us here. Uh, and there has that's where most of the projectile has been thrown from, uh, as you can see here. Uh, now, as John starts the pan over towards his right, you can see all the law enforcement that is down here. Uh, they're all from all over the valley, different jurisdictions. Uh, and this police line goes this entire length of the intersection here, uh, just on the other side uh, of this uh, Salt Lake City uh, SWAT vehicle. Uh, that has been the vehicle that has been used uh, for medics and everything. Uh, John's gonna come over here with me now uh, as we, we come over here and sidestep this because I want you to see the other side of the street down here. Uh, as you can see, as we start to move past 
uh, all these officers, you know, Unified Police have brought their armored vehicle down. There's a bunch of armored vehicles down there uh, on the uh, other side of 400 South, in between 300 South and 400 South. Uh, and they've got that entire area blocked off, and it appears that they have uh, a barricade set up over there. Now, as we continue to move back over here, uh, there's been two points of aggression right over here by that hand uh, where you see the don't walk hand sign. Uh, that's where a group of people have been uh, voicing their frustrations. And as we pan over to the right, uh, this is the other group that has been voicing their frustrations here. And this is all for George Floyd. And these folks say that they want justice, they don't want peace. And one of the places that we know that people can get something done is at the Capitol. And that is where we know Haley Hendricks is. So I'm going to send that over to her over at the Capitol because right here, things are changing dynamically and we're going to keep you up to date. So Haley, we're going to tell us what you're seeing over at the Capitol. Jason, yeah, that's right. We're here up live at the Utah State Capitol. And as you can see here, we still have protesters around as they've hold up their signs and they continue to come closer and closer to Utah Highway Patrol who stand here on the steps of the Utah State Capitol. Now, even in the last 20 minutes, people continue to inch closer and closer toward these officers. Now, I did speak to a Utah Highway Patrol officer who said it is after eight o'clock and they are just hoping and holding out. They don't want to engage in any violent action here. And any consequence of that. So, but one thing I do want to mention, you know, we came on earlier and we were talking about graffiti that um, came out earlier this morning. I guess it was too late for anything to happen. But as these troopers stand up here and stand their grounds, we also want to note that there are water bottles out here and earlier, just not too long ago, there were people out here handing out water bottles to people. I want to say, I want to say those are the helpers in the midst of all of this, but let's take a live look here at the protesters and the number of Utah Highway Patrol that are out here. This is a live look at the scene here tonight. People are holding up their signs, standing in front of these officers. All right, and we will wrap this up and send it back to the studio here. We are reporting live at the Utah State Capitol. I'm Haley Hendricks with ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Haley. Please stay safe out there. Now we have on the phone Salt Lake City Councilwoman Amy Fowler. She represents District 7. Councilwoman, are you there? Can you hear me? Well, this is Janetta Williams. Oh, Janetta Williams. Okay, welcome. Janetta Williams is um, the executive director of the NAACP. Janetta, are you there? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, I, I am here and I'm, I can hear you. <laughs> Janetta, I'm so sorry. It, things are really fluid over here, but thank you so much for joining us on the show. Of course. <laughs> Janetta, but I know you. I know you really well. We yes, worked together do. several times. <laughs> um, Janetta, oh my gosh. I mean, we saw this situation develop in the last few days, right? It started in Minneapolis and we started to see the response growing across the country and now it's hitting here at home. Are you surprised that things have really turned this emotional? Yes, I am very surprised that uh, things have uh, escalated to the level that they are here in Salt Lake City. I do believe in people having the right to protest, but we do believe in nonviolent protests as well, uh, just like Dr. King always did and taught nonviolence. And so we do the same thing, you know, with our NAACP. We're not a part of the uh, event that's going on today, but it's uh, alarming to see the folks throwing knives at police officers, hitting police officers, uh, attacking police officers, burning their cars, uh, burning another uh, person's car that they had, uh, the police had arrested. So all of those different things is very uh, alarming. And, uh, you know, just to see it here in Salt Lake City, which uh, I and others across the country. I've been getting emails and telephone calls, text messages that they're really shocked that the um, Salt, Lake, Salt Lake rather has uh, made the CNN news. 
Now, Gerada, um, I think that we need to remind the public um, that what is going on as far as the violence and the destruction, it's kind of distracting what the main message is here. Uh, we know that the demonstration was originally organized by Utah Against Police Brutality. A lot of the peaceful demonstrators who showed up, they showed up with signs that said Black Lives Matter. But the ones who are inciting the violence and the destruction, they're being connected to some of these peaceful protesters. We've spoken to some who say, hey, you know what, this is not us. Um, what would you say to the public who maybe doesn't know that and are lumping together the peaceful protesters with maybe the violent looters and rioters? Uh, I would say to the folks that uh, folks must be careful not to fuel tension. And we ask that folks put safety first. And we do not condone the vandalism, the destruction of property, the looting of businesses. And we need to have change, but violent protest is not the answer to any of these. And so here we are again, uh, looking at the reason why the people are doing the protest. And to begin with, it was because of the bruise killing the knee well, by with uh, George Foster. I mean, um, I, I said George Foster, but George um, Floyd. Floyd. George, Floyd, George yes. Floyd. And then we had Eric Garner. We had Brianna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, the little uh, twelve-year-old, I think twelve years old, t t uh, Tamara Rice, uh, years ago. And so the, and then Michael Brown, because a lot of people remember that in the protest. But all of these things going on, and we, there's folks that we, yes, we're, we're happy that they are uh, alarmed by all of this, and we're happy that they think that they can do a protest, but we ask that they do it in a nonviolent way and do the, do the protest. And another thing, we want folks that, you know, if they want to have the protest and they want to know what they can do, what they can do is they can help us register people to vote and then go to the polls on Election Day. So those are some of the things. So they can get involved in community activities and community projects and not just take one incident to go out to do, uh, you know, have a violent protest. That they can do things in a more structured environment so then, you know, we don't have to look at all of the businesses that are already losing money because the uh, coronavirus and then they open today, and then all of a sudden they can't open. They have to care for you, but the care for you won't be to all of the businesses. But still, yet yeah, there's there's no sense in having the businesses open when people can't come downtown to go shopping and do what they want to do, you know, with the businesses downtown. So we just want people to uh, to be very careful, you know, when they're doing the protest. And the people that are not the violent protesters, then maybe they can leave and yes. go home so they're not there with the crowd because if there's two people three people that is not in with the violent pro protesters then they're going to lump them everybody together and that's what's happened all right Jenna, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today you've always been a great advocate for social justice and we appreciate you so much. Well, thank you. All right. Okay. We're going to head back out there live in the scene. This is a live look at the Utah State Capitol. Uh, we're going to head to ABC4's Nicole Newman, who is live from downtown Salt Lake City. Nicole. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please move out the way. Hey, guys. It's still a tense situation that's continuing to unfold out here. Right now, protesters chanting, I can't breathe. Again, those were the words that were heard by George Floyd when he was in police custody. Now, over the past 30 minutes to an hour, we've seen people move in and move out, and people continue to come down here to this area again. This is pretty centralized right now. We are still right on the side of the city library across from the Dunkin' Donuts and the Planet Fitness where the those two vehicles were burning. And again, it looks like um, some more vandalism. It appears that someone has taken a parking sign. Um, yeah, so more people coming out to this area. Again, you heard them just chanting, I can't breathe. And again, the area where we are is in this area, excuse me, where the two vehicles were burning. Police still have their wall where they're continuing to keep protesters from moving forward and so far that seems to have been very effective.
Rosie. All right, Nicole, thank you so much uh, for that update. Please stay safe out there. We know we're pretty close to some demonstrators. Uh, we know that um, out there things are really difficult um, for our crew members out there. Uh, we know that you know our reporters, uh, Jason Wynn, Haley Hendricks, and Nicole Newman have uh, had to keep their masks on uh, to protect themselves from COVID-19, but conditions. They're hot out there. Uh, there's some gas that's being thrown out there. Uh, and so they're doing their very best to bring you the latest updates from their vantage points. OK, uh, hopefully now we have Salt Lake City Councilwoman Amy Fowler on the phone. She represents District 7. Amy, are you there? I am. OK, sorry about that. We thought we had you on there no, earlier. Not a problem. Uh, thank you not so much. Um, we appreciate having you on the show with us. Um, we know that right now the time is 835 and uh, city officials have implemented a curfew that starts at 8 p.m. Uh, some people probably not following these guidelines. Can you please help us em emphasize why it's so important for our residents to abide by this curfew? Well, <clears throat> The curfew, I believe, is set in place for the safety of everybody. Um, not only, I mean, we are dealing with not only a tragic situation, and I appreciate every voice that is being heard at this point, um, but we're also dealing with a virus that we don't understand. And so the curfew is put in place so that we can keep our residents safe. And that is the key goal of, uh, I think, both the Salt Lake City Council and the Salt Lake City Mayor is to keep people safe. Now, in some of your guys' city council meetings, you guys have had demonstrators, those who have come to the chambers themselves and have demonstrated. Um, can, can you, for those who maybe weren't aware or weren't there or didn't hear about it, um, from your observations, what were some of the emotions or thoughts behind some of those people who maybe have approached the council before, but in a demonstrative way, uh, to talk about police brutality or race relations? I believe that the city council has always welcomed those uh, demonstrations and um, we'll, we will continue to uh, welcome and recognize those demonstrations. I personally believe in uh, the First Amendment and the, the right of people to have their voice heard and I want people's voices heard. And to be fair, I think that I, I'm not going to speak for other council members, but I think that everybody wants a voice heard. That's why we are in the position that we are as elected officials to make sure that we're representing the people that elected us. Well, uh, Amy, we appreciate your time so much. Thank you for sharing your important message with us. Uh, we look forward to talking with you on this topic again soon. I'll always be here. All right. Thank you, Amy. All right. Let's head back out to the scene near downtown Salt Lake City in 400 South, 200 East. ABC4 is Jason Wynn uh, has an update for us. Jason. Yeah, Rosie, uh, we're giving you a live look here. They just put up a flag that's representative of law enforcement on a pole in the middle of that car. That's that second vehicle that was on fire and they are now setting that flag on fire. Uh, you may hear some obscenities come from the crowd here. Uh, once this flag starts to catch on fire, law enforcement is letting this happen right now. The other thing I can tell you, Rosie, is that uh, they brought in the blow horns. They are not messing around here pretty soon because if John, can you follow me right over here? I just wanted to show you here. This is the Salt Lake City officer right over here next to this utility pole has one of those blow horns. Uh, and at any point we expect them to uh, to start and making an announcement uh, to this crowd. Uh, right now this crowd is moving. This is uh, this is now becoming a an, they're holding the line. They're screaming, hold the line, hold the line. Uh, there is now an active fight uh, that is happening. Uh, you can, there is now clubs being used. Uh, you can hear weapons being deployed. Uh, we are going to stay behind all of this. Uh, as my photographer John shows you here, there is a smoke bomb uh, that has come through here. Uh, you can see people uh, now are being detained. 
Uh, we're going to move back here. We're going to move out of the wind here. Come this way, John. Uh, you can see this is this is now this is what law enforcement was uh, did not want to happen as the sun went down. Uh, you can see uh, right over here uh, as law enforcement starts to move in. We're going to stay right here, John. Uh, and they moved past that vehicle here that they were just trying to set that flag on fire. Uh, and they held the line. They moved it forward. Uh, this officer is now putting out that smoke bomb that was thrown uh, over here in this direction. But as my photographer starts to pan over here, this entire line here, this 180 degree that we are showing you right now, this entire line has moved forward. They have pushed the public back towards Washington Square, towards the city hall. You can see that this line is going to continue to move forward. Uh, the officers have been screaming, hold the line. And as we pan over here to the left, you can see this man. Uh, he has a Kevlar vest on and he is not a law enforcement officer. Uh, and we can tell that he is uh, being prepared and trying to protect himself from something. What that may be, we don't know because we were told this was supposed to be a peaceful protest. Uh, so that man is obviously uh, geared up for something, but law enforcement, uh, they are uh, detaining him right now. Uh, we've seen several of protesters who have been detained be released, uh, but we've also seen a lot of other uh, uh, people that were detained were taken away. Uh, one thing as we move back over here, because this, this seems to be the main area where most people are making their uh, push against police. And we're starting to see that vehicle that's been on fire. Uh, there's some obscenities on that vehicle, so we don't want to get too close to it. But you can see it's still smoldering. That's the second vehicle in downtown Salt Lake City in a block that has caught fire. Now, as we start to pan over here, uh, to John's going to move his camera over to his left. I want you to see some more of this screen here. Uh, John, come over here. Uh, just, yeah, over here. Uh, the police are moving this line over here back even further. Uh, you can see that they have cleaned that entire area out over here. Uh, and from what we were told, Rosie, is, is that, uh, you know, they're trying to make sure that they have control over this crowd uh, and that no one is actually hurt. But more and more, as this sun starts to go down, the crowd is getting more and more agitated and we're seeing more and more stuff starting to be thrown in this direction. I mean, just take a look on the ground here. This is all the debris that has been thrown uh, towards this intersection, towards law enforcement. Uh, and I can tell you there's police from all over the valley down here uh, that have been rotating, making sure that they are able to hold that line. Because as you just heard, as they move this line further towards City Hall, they plan on holding that line. And we've been telling you all day long that these officers have a choice. They either move the line forward or they hold in place. And right now they're moving the line forward towards City Hall. And you can see there are a number of people that have their hands up. There are some people that have uh, long sticks in their hands. Uh, you know, officers also have uh, clubs inside their hands. Uh, a lot of these people are screaming, I can't breathe now. I can't breathe. And that is specifically something for George Floyd, uh, the man who was uh, allegedly killed by law enforcement uh, and he has now been arrested uh, but right here in Salt Lake City you can see right here this man has a Black Lives Matter uh, mask on he's holding his hand up in front of law enforcement for the most part that is what we've seen that's what we've seen so uh, the crowd is now starting to move towards City Hall uh, we're going to continue to monitor the situation right now uh, and send things back to you in the studio I'm Jason Wynn live in downtown Salt we'll Lake City in front of City Hall ABC 4 News all right Jason thank you and please stay safe out there uh, we'd like to go uh, to what we've heard from Governor Gary Herbert this morning uh, or earlier this afternoon about activating the National Guard. Uh, make no mistake that we'll do whatever is necessary to restore order to our state, to our capital city here in Salt Lake. Now that was Governor Gary Herbert. We heard from him earlier this afternoon. Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall issued a curfew order that went into place about 45 minutes ago at 8 o'clock. Time now is 843. That is a reminder that no one should be out in Salt Lake City unless necessary. Uh, next, we would like to um, 
show you this is a this is a live look right here at the Salt Lake City Capitol. Uh, to recap um, on our curfew, those who should actually be out and about right now are only those who must be. So any of our essential workers, such as our EMS, our police officers, uh, such as what you see there, those who live in the area, those who are bringing food or medicine to those in need. Other than that, if you do not need to be outside on public ground, the Salt Lake City Mayor and City officials have asked that you please stay home. That curfew began earlier today at 8 o'clock. It will go until 6 a.m. on Monday, and that is in effect for all of Salt Lake City. We're going to go now from that shot of the Salt Lake City Capitol to downtown Salt Lake City, where ABC 4's Nicole Newman joins us now. Nicole. Rosie, well, we are standing on the other side. Can you please get out of the way of my camera? Thank you. Uh, we are standing on the other side of where Jason and John were standing. Come on, man, stop playing. Where Jason and John were standing. And you can see how police officers continue to take multiple steps in to try to get these protesters to move back. Now, where we are right now, this is a city and county building. And I can tell you, as protesters and police actually continue to move forward, it seems that it's effective to start pushing protesters onto the lawn here at the city capitol building, but also on the other side where Planet Fitness is and the Dunkin' Donuts. There's police over there that have been pushing people this way. So it seems like the objective. We do not have this confirmed, but it may be is to move this crowd down 200 east away from this particular area where these vehicles have been burning. Um, the crowd is particularly get, starting to get a little bit rowdy. We've been bumped a lot now that we're, you know, obviously we're with the camera. People know that we are media. We've been bumped a lot and uh, a lot of people trying to interfere with our shots but of course we are trying to adhere to where police are allowing us to be so we can give you guys the images of what's happening here and it appears right now if i can see over the crowd that some officers there's more officers in front of the dunkin donuts if i can see over this crowd that are starting to move over starting to move in closer down to this area here. Excuse me. But that's the latest as far as what we can uh, see right now with the protesters starting to pull right in this area again in front of the city county building. Rosie. All right, thank you, Nicole. Please remain safe out there. Um, the conditions have continued to develop ever since these peaceful demonstrations started at two o'clock this afternoon. The original organizers uh, planned for this to be a very peaceful protest, but it has continued to just turn very violent and emotional. Let's head back out to the other side where ABC 4's Jason Wynn joins us. Jason. Hey, good evening, uh, Rosie. Now, what I got to tell you here is that police uh, have brought out the the blowhorns to tell the crowd to please disperse. Uh, they have been pushing that line. You can, oh, here comes the movement here, uh, right over to our right. Uh, looks like another young man has been detained. Uh, they have pulled him through the line. And we've seen this several times where people have been detained. They've been brought on the other side of the line. Uh, they get talked to. Uh, some of them have been released. Some of them have actually been arrested. Uh, they are putting cuffs on this man uh, right over here to the right here. You can see uh, their date detaining him uh, to the right. So this is uh, a live look. This is another person. There's been uh, at least a dozen or so people who have been detained uh, because of this. Now, as John starts to move back over to the left of your screen, you can see that law enforcement line. That law enforcement line is completely cleared out from 400 south to 200 east. They have pushed everybody back towards City Hall right here in downtown Salt Lake City. I can tell you that it is hard to breathe down here because of so much chemicals that have been thrown, <coughs> excuse me, through the air. Uh, 
<clears throat> Sorry, and uh, because there has also been a burning car, uh, you just see a large sign thrown at police. Uh, this is the type of stuff that we've seen. You'll see another officer bring that back to where we are, uh, and this is something that they have constantly have to do uh, as uh, they um, get things thrown at them. Now, again, this crowd is growing. We can tell that it is growing, that it's been growing all night. We know that once it gets dark, uh, things get unpredictable. Uh, now there seems to be a crowd that is fighting amongst themselves. So eventually police may have to step in for that. Uh, over here to my right, you can see officers are now starting to arm themselves uh, and, and load up uh, with more non-lethal weapon and bullets. Uh, now look over here. Here we go. Here we go. They're moving. Uh, the police line's moving forward now. The police line is moving forward. I told you this all day. They have the choice to move forward or stay in place. And they are aggressively moving forward. Heads up. Uh, got you. You're safe, John. Um, and uh, these officers, they're arming up with non-lethal force. Uh, and at any point, here we go, John, over here. To the right, you can see the pushing, the shoving. You can see these people pushing right against law enforcement. And eventually, the, one of those folks will be detained. They will pull that person through. Uh, and you can see that person is yelling, trying uh, to show that uh, he has strength. Oh, and he just got shot. Uh, got shot by non-lethal rounds uh, right in the chest. Uh, and that uh, is a bottle that was just thrown in our direction. Uh, and these are the things that we've been telling you about uh, right over here. This officer uh, right over here, he's also arming himself. God. All right, I'm all right, I'm all right. It's, it's on my backside, guys. It's on my backside. It's all right.